Hello and welcome to the Reviews Brothers. As we all know, Doom is the gift that keeps on giving, thanks to the efforts of modders all over the place that keep adding more and more content for us to enjoy. New levels, weapons, enemies and even completely new gameplay mechanics. It really is impressive to see. We've already looked at a whole load of Doom mods in this series, but hey, there's hundreds more for me to try and you beautiful people keep recommending really good ones to me. So here's a selection. And don't worry if your favourite isn't here, as there's plenty more for me to go through, so just keep on sending those suggestions in. Oh, and this time, so people stop shouting at me, I've included download links in the description below, because heaven forbid you just Google them like I did, you lazy gits. Now, how about I shut up, you press that subscribe button, and we take a look at some games. First up, here is Aliens Doom, a total conversion that shockingly changes everything to be from the iconic movie series. You get to choose from three characters, each of which have slightly different stats and weapons, which is a really nice touch. The levels are all the same though, no matter which character you choose, and there's 11 of them, which loosely follow the plot of the second film. You start out in a deserted space station where you just have to explore and kit yourself out with weapons, before heading further into its base where you'll be attacked by hordes of deadly aliens, facehuggers, and eventually an alien queen. All the levels themselves are fairly large and atmospheric, and in a lot of cases just plain dark. Thankfully you do have a flashlight, which I didn't realise until way later than I should have done. The game does a good job of having ambient sound and that really helps to build the tension, and the aliens themselves can pop out of nowhere to surprise you. You do however also have the iconic motion tracker from the films. This is constantly clicking and beeping and it will start making more noise when something's nearby. This is really cool and you still don't know if you're going to be attacked from above, below or just straight ahead. Thankfully killing aliens is a hell of a lot of fun and you get a great set of weapons to do it here as well. You've got your usual pistol and shotgun, but you also get a smart gun which only fires when aimed at an enemy, pulse rifles complete with the awesome sound it makes from the films, and a flamethrower and grenades. In one of the later levels you even get to use the power loader which is awesome, if a little janky. Getting around the levels is tricky and can be confusing at times. I'll be honest, I'm not entirely sure if this was running correctly as there were parts of the scenery that were floating in mid-air or that just wouldn't let me pass them. I came across a lot of clipping issues as well as the flaming candle things from the Doom games which always seemed to be in the way. I feel like these sprites were meant to have changed to something else. But even with these small issues I was able to get around eventually, though sometimes I did have to use the no clipping cheat and I was able to progress through the stages. The graphics here are decent enough, though not the best. However, this is apparently one of, if not the first ever, total conversion that was made for Doom, in which case it's still pretty damn impressive. The aliens look decent enough and have some cool animations on them. Some parts of the levels are made to look like the alien hives and these are really cool, but where I also saw where most of the clipping issues. Aliens explode in a satisfying way though, and it was a bit of a shame, or possibly a blessing, that their acid blood didn't hurt you as it sprayed everywhere. This is a really fun conversion though, and definitely one that alien fans will want to check out. Next up is Angelic Aviary, a mod that changes all the monsters in the game that was recommended to me by Dana Otkin. Sorry if I've said that wrong. This is quite a simple mod that changes the enemies you fight from horrific monsters from hell to cute cherub anime angels from heaven. Every enemy has its own version and most of them actually fly here which can cause a few problems, as well as a few of them having their own styles of attack. You have your standard flying angels, these fire magic attacks at you and will fly around all over the place, and there's strange little doll looking angels that always come in pairs who hold a shotgun between them. You can just kill one of them making it harder for the other one to attack you which is pretty cool. Then there's the bigger flying angels, these fire ice shots at you which can actually freeze you which is cool, and annoying of course. If you have other enemies near you though you can use this to your advantage and put another enemy between you and the ice shots and they'll get frozen instead of you. Demons and Spectres are replaced by angels clad in black. You can only see their halo while they're invisible, so they can be hard to spot. But when they attack, they will become visible. But like the original enemies, they do have to be all up in your face to do this. What's cool is that the angels are actually pretty deadly and do a fair bit of damage. But they also drop health when they die, making it a good trade-off. I like this aspect, and it keeps things fair. I'm playing this mod using the TNT map pack and I do think that this is a mod that you're better off using with levels that aren't the regular Doom ones. The angels themselves all look pretty good, they don't have a ton of animation, but it's alright. 
They are quite tricky to fight, especially in large groups. And no, this isn't a naughty mod, so there's no dodgy hentai angel action here. They do make a lot of noise though, with the standard anime girl high-pitched squeals that you'd expect from things like this. Amusingly though, the creator is well aware, and in the options, they do let you customise each angel's voice sample separately, so you can turn whichever ones on and off that you want. If you're bored of killing demons and want some different enemies that also have their own attacks and ways of doing things, then this isn't a bad one to check out. Here's one I probably should have talked about a long time ago. It's Brutal Doom. This is probably the most famous mod for Doom nowadays. Well, apart from H Doom, but I'm not talking about that one. And really, it's the best way to play it in my opinion. Brutal Doom works with all of the original Doom games, as well as a ton of other mods and adds a ton of new animations, weapons and gameplay tweaks that really turns even the original Doom into a totally new experience. I don't really know where to start with this one, because there's so much to it. So I'll begin with the weapons. All of the original ones are here, but they've been given a big overhaul. The pistol now shoots a lot faster, the shotgun is way more powerful and has an amazing reload animation, the same with a double barreled shotgun, which reduces most enemies to a pile of goo when used. The chain gun is crazy fun to use here, and the rocket launcher as well, which you now have to be careful of using with your back to the wall as it has a blowback. The plasma rifle sets people on fire, and the BFG just obliterates everything in sight. On top of this, you can now find Uzis, assault rifles, auto shotgun, grenade launcher, homing rocket launchers that Revenants use, and even the arm cannons from the Mancubus enemies. All of these are just so much fun to use and do a hell of a lot more damage. Enemies here have also changed quite a lot. They have a mixture of the weapons that I've just mentioned, so some will be using pistols, some are using Uzis, shotguns, chain guns. The enemies themselves also deal out a hell of a lot more damage and have some horrific noises now that are really creepy to hear. They sound like proper demonic possessed people and it's awesome. There's a hell of a lot of new animations for enemies as well, making them move a lot smoother and they even have scared animations, new attacks and most impressively location damage. So if you shoot an enemy in the head, then their head will explode. You can shoot their arms and legs off, which might not even kill them, they'll literally crawl on the floor and still attack you. Amazingly, this applies to pretty much all enemies, so even demons, imps, hell knights and the rest of the roster have new amazing ways to die to make the game so much fun to experiment with. When you get berserk mode, you can also do finishing moves, and you get a little cutscene of you ripping the enemies apart. It's just so damn impressive. And as you may have already noticed, the gore has been turned up to 11. Enemies explode like crazy, and blood is splattered all over the walls. Using rocket launchers or the BFG will soon turn white walls into red ones, and it never gets old. To help with the atmosphere, the lighting's been updated too, with proper muzzle flash and dark corridors being given moody lighting, so enemies can more easily jump out at you. There's even a few tweaks to some of the levels, making them a little bit longer, and if you get the metal soundtrack mod to go along with it, then you just have the most awesome time with this one. As mentioned, you can use this with a lot of other mods as well, but I would only really recommend using it with map packs and not mods that have their own enemies and weapons, as they'll often cancel each other out or just not work at all. Now really, I've barely scratched the surface on what you can do with this mod, but a lot of the appeal for me was finding out all the crazy stuff you can do in it. For example, you can even sneak up on enemies and break their necks for a silent kill, and even find other marines in the levels that you can rescue who will fight alongside you. There's just so many little touches here which are great. Really, all you need to know is that this is an essential mod that totally transforms Doom into a new experience that everyone should try. Honestly, I think it plays a lot better than loads of modern FPS games. Here's a really cool mod called Circus 666, sometimes known as Happy Time Circus. This is one huge level that will take you a while to get through. You are still Doom Guy, and you're dropped off at an abandoned road, which as you explore gets creepier as you come across abandoned buildings with ominous writing all over them, as well as having been smashed to bits by someone or something. As you carry on exploring, you'll eventually come across a huge circus, which is awesome, because circuses are great and fun for all the family. But you'd never believe it, this one isn't friendly at all, and it's filled with all sorts of possessed rides and attractions. This mod keeps all the weapons from the original Doom games, but changes up all the enemies, and you'll be fighting evil balloons, decapitated heads, clowns, and the most famous killer clown of all, Pennywise himself. 
As mentioned, you have just one level here, but it's massive, with over a thousand enemies, but not a lot in the way of weapons or ammo. I was playing on the Harvard difficulty, and man, it really is hard. You need to explore every inch of the circus to find buttons and keys that open up new areas. Most of the areas come in the style of various fairground attractions, and this works really well. What's cool is that a lot of them have their own creepy carnival music that starts playing when you enter them. Then you'll be ambushed by literally hundreds of enemies. Now, most of the enemies are just balloons that slowly float towards you, and when they get close enough, they bite your face off. But there's so many of them that you'll quickly go through ammo. And what's cool is that there's hundreds of regular balloons, so you never really know what you're about to be attacked by and what's just a normal balloon. In the right conditions, you can just make out the faint evil faces of the bad balloons, but a lot of the time the lights are going crazy, so it's hard to see. But what's nice is that a lot of the regular balloons have hidden items in them, so if you shoot them down, you might get some more ammo or health, but you never know really when, and it's a bit of a gamble. The map can be quite confusing, but that's kind of the point here. You'll go around in circles hunting down keys, and there's even some pretty good jump scares thrown in here too, with Pennywise especially jumping out when you least expect it. The mod uses its own sound and music, which is used really well, and helps add the creepy vibes, and this would be a good one to combine with some different weapon mods I reckon. I was playing this level for over an hour and still hadn't managed to beat it, mainly because I spent a lot of my time dying as it's bloody hard, but I did want to keep playing as it is a lot of fun, and I was surprised at how engrossing and atmospheric it was. This is definitely one I'll be going back to, and if you want a cool, very challenging level to try, I recommend you do too. Here is Going Down, a large map pack that sees Doom Guy entering a tower block that's filled with demons. You start at the top of the tower and have to make your way down from the top to the very bottom, seeing the block get more and more hellish as you go. This is another mod that is basically just a map pack, so it doesn't include any new weapons or enemies. I did play this later on with the Brutal Doom mod also applied, and it was even more fun. But for the sake of this video, I'm playing all the mods as they come, and it's up to you to experiment with other combinations. The objective on each level is to find a key that opens an elevator that takes you onto the next floor. Simple. But the levels themselves are predictably convoluted and packed with hundreds of enemies, and it's a hell of a lot of fun. You learn within the first few levels that this isn't going to be an easy ride. Enemies spawn in all over the place, and it doesn't take long for their heavy hitters like Barons of Hell or Arachnotrons to show up. Thankfully, the game is pretty generous with weapons and ammo. There is a big focus on close combat here as well, so you want to get used to the shotgun, chain gun, and even the chainsaw comes in quite handy here, where you want to take out enemies in narrow corridors while using as little ammo as possible. As you know, there'll be a big bastard around the corner any minute. All the levels are based on actual apartment block sort of things, so you start out on the roof and go through apartments, office floors, administration blocks, basements, as well as what lurks beneath them. They're all relatively small in size, as they are just one floor, but that doesn't mean that they're easy. Often you'll need to do a ton of exploring to find the various keys and buttons that you need to open up new areas, and the sheer number of enemies means that you're often backed into a corner fighting for your life. It would have been cool to see some new textures or something in here, but that's really my only gripe with the mod, is that it's just a map pack featuring assets from Doom 2. But really that's a very small issue, and most of the time I didn't have time to complain, as I was busy trying not to get my face ripped off. Again, this is a great map pack that was recommended to me, and I would do the same. It's hard as balls, and has some really cool moments in there, and it's a decent challenge. Here is a pretty popular one, it's called Head On, and it's a really awesome total conversion that was so popular it can actually even be bought as its own thing on Steam or good old games. Head On sees you take control of Zan, an Amazonian orc who finds herself waking up in some mines with no real memory of what's going on, other than she needs to get out and kill pretty much anything she sees along the way. You start in the caves and eventually make your way into an old town that used to be occupied by your friends, but all that's left are their dead bodies. So you fight your way through, find the enemy base, and you want to chop the head off of their boss. The gameplay is of course very similar to your traditional DOS shooters, with the main focus being exploring large maze-like areas, hunting down keys and switches that open doors to let you progress. However, there's actually a few more elements to this one. For example, you might have to find pickaxes to smash walls, chemicals to combine in an alchemy lab to create potions, and so on. 
They're not exactly RPG elements, and are often little more than fetch quests or item finding missions, but it does add to the experience. The game is also kind of one large open world, with each level being interconnected, which is cool, and it's nice to see how it all progresses. The levels themselves are pretty damn huge as well, and can easily take 20 minutes to an hour on your first try. As you can see, all the assets are pretty much original. There's all new weapons and enemies everywhere, and it's pretty impressive, especially as I think it was all created by just one person. You fight evil worm things, cultists, warlocks, witches, demon hounds, and other fantasy-style monsters. These are all fun to fight, though my main complaint is that they all take a while to introduce some of the more interesting enemies. But to do the killing, you do have some cool weapons. You find an axe early on that's very powerful and effective. Weapons also have secondary functions too, and you can choose to throw the axe if you want, which again is powerful, but you run the risk of losing it. You get a nail gun thing, which is your go-to weapon, a scattershot thing, which is kind of like a shotgun that's good up close but pretty useless otherwise, a bow that fires explosive arrows, and some magic weapons as well. For the most part, these weapons are decent, and some need to reload as well, but they feel good enough to use. Like most mods, this isn't easy. There's a ton of enemies on each level, and they do a good amount of damage, and actually navigating the levels can be a real pain at times, as a lot of the items you need are really well hidden, often in hidden areas. I would admit that I spent a lot more time wandering around aimlessly than I would have liked. This can get tedious when you've killed everything and you're running in circles, only to find a tiny key that you've missed hidden amongst a shelf of other things that aren't even collectible. They really should have made the keys and things stand out a bit more, though I guess that's kind of the point. But overall, this is a really fun mod with some really cool characters and a decent story. There's even a sequel which has even more levels and a few improvements. I would definitely recommend picking these games up on Steam or GOG. They're well worth your time, especially if you're into Doom. Though I have a feeling that some people are going to tell me that this isn't really a mod and it's its own thing created using the GZ Doom engine. But that's okay, I still count that, I just wanted an excuse to talk about it. Oh, and again, for those wondering, yes, the main character is a thick orc with excellent proportions, but this isn't a dirty mod, so there's none of that business. Next up is Doom Psychophobia. This is a really cool total conversion that features new characters, weapons, enemies, sounds, music, and a whole load of new textures. There's a lot here. There isn't much of a story that I saw, but you get three episodes here, all with a pretty different theme. All of them see you start the game in a cell where you've clearly been captured. The first thing you do on any of the episodes is escape, and then you have to fight for your life as you try to escape either a crazy military base, a hellish world, or a medieval land, depending on which episode you're playing. But whichever one you choose, you're going to have a tough time, because this mod is fucking brutal. At least it is on the hard difficulty that I played it on. Maybe I should have dropped it down. The characters you play as are Vigilante, who I don't recognise, Jacob, or Caleb if you want to get his name right this time, from Blood, the Doom Guy of course, and then Train and Voodoo, who I think are characters from Quake 3, but don't quote me on that. I tried them all out, but they didn't really play any differently as far as I could tell, apart from some voice clips. And again, I'm not entirely convinced that this mod was running properly for me, as the face at the bottom of the screen was always Doom Guy no matter who I chose. But that didn't stop me having a blast with this one. Almost immediately you notice that the weapon models all look great, and are sort of 3D. In fact, I'm not smart enough to know if they're actual 3D models, or just 3D models made into 2D ones, if that makes sense. Either way, they look awesome, and are literally dozens of new weapons for you to use here. There's loads of pistols, shotguns, rocket launchers, machine guns, and laser weapons. And you're going to need them, because the enemies here are really tough and relentless, and there's a shitload of them everywhere. Enemies also use the same weapons that you do, and it seems to be quite randomised, as every time I started a new game, enemies had different weapons in different locations. So you'll quickly meet people with machine guns and rocket launchers, while you're doing your best to defend yourself with a wimpy pistol. For the most part, the enemy sprites are original ones, but with changes made to them in the terms of aggression, accuracy, and they've all been given a bit of a makeover as well, with some of them now sporting funky bald heads or guile-style crew cuts. In the other episodes, you get demons and imps that look much more evil, as well as enemies from Heretic and Hexen, and they're all very good at making your life a misery. The actual level design here is pretty good as well. They're all very large with plenty to do in them as you track down the usual keys and switches so you can open new doors. There's some really good use of lighting here as well, with bases and caves that you can find getting pretty creepy at times, especially combined with the fact that you know that you can die very quickly. It makes the whole thing pretty tense to play. 
There's a lot to like here, and this is of course another one that I would highly recommend checking out. We're going to finish off with a few mods that swap around the enemies, so I recommend also adding a map pack of your choice to go along with them. And first of all, we have Stylish Hell. This is a monster randomizer that replaces all the enemies with demon girls in sexy outfits. Sometimes no outfit at all. However, don't get too excited, as demons don't have nips, so this is totally safe for work. There's really not a huge amount to say about this one, as it's just an enemy swap. But yeah, they are all sexy demons, and they are slightly tougher than usual enemies, dealing out a bit more damage and taking more hits as well. Each enemy has its own sexy skin, and there's some that do different things, like the green enemies, which when killed split into smaller versions that are just as dangerous. The enemies here all tend to move a lot faster as well, and can be harder to hit, as well as the projectiles that they throw at you. These are also much quicker, so if you're in a confined space, it can be very difficult. In fact, I really did notice that I died a lot more than usual on the maps that I'm familiar with, because of the increased speed and hit points of the enemies. It does a good job of giving things a bit more of a challenge. Surprisingly, this mod also removed pretty much all blood, though I didn't really notice that while I was playing it, and it certainly doesn't make anything worse. And honestly, that's really all there is to say about this one. It is a very simple mod, but it's a cool one to check out, and as mentioned, it is worth combining with other map, weapon or gameplay mods to give it that bit of extra fun. Here is LA Taylor Girl, or is it La Taylor Girl? I'm not entirely sure. This one doesn't actually change the enemies up, and instead changes the weapons, and also has a few cool gameplay changes. You've got three big boobed women characters to choose from here, each of which have their own unique weapons. There's Daina, Siri and Nari, a human, demon and robot. They each control the same, but have access to slightly different weapons that still follow the usual Doom game formula, but do work quite differently, with crazy shooting patterns for things like the shotgun and machine guns. The mod doesn't change the enemies at all, but is one that's always recommended to be played alongside the aforementioned stylish hell. Something that's unique here is that there's a massive focus on clothing. Littered around the levels, instead of some weapons or armour, are cloth sets. These range from things like nurse outfits to ninjas or just plain clothes. What's cool is that depending on the clothes that you're wearing, you get different stats. So if you're a ninja, you've got more speed and enemies take longer to react to you. Other outfits make certain other weapons stronger or give you more health and so on. You can only wear one outfit at a time of course, but you can choose to change into any that you come across. What's nice is that when you do change, you get text on screen telling you what your outfit does, so if you prefer the other one, you can just change back into it. You've got a little graphic of your character in the bottom corner, which I'm sure you've noticed by now, that shows you what your outfit looks like, and in GZ Doom, you also get into a third person mode and you can check it out from every angle if you so wish, but I don't know why you'd want to do that. As you get attacked, as well as losing health, you actually lose your clothing, and health and armour shards are replaced here with sewing kits, which let you repair your clothes. But eventually, if you don't repair them, you'll be completely naked. But no, I'm afraid you don't get to see any nippage. There's even a few modes that you can choose from in the options that limit the clothes you can wear, or to make it even harder, there's a mode where you can't wear clothes at all, so you don't get any of the perks. Again, this mod can be used with the regular Doom wads, or any other map pack and enemy pack, so it's a good one to combine with some of your favourites if you want a totally new experience. And finally for today, here is Zacko, also known as Nude Doom. This is another enemy swap mod that changes out all the enemies for sexy big booed women. And yes, if you're lucky, this one will let you see some nips. Now, as it's just an enemy mod, all the weapons and levels remain the same. So I've actually combined this one with a really cool and difficult map pack called Sunlust. Anyway, let's start with the enemies. As you'd expect, each enemy is replaced here with some really high quality pre-rendered elf women with big guns. Take that any way you want, both are replicable. All of them have the same attacks as the regular enemies, and it's just the sprites that have changed. So the zombie men are now sexy soldier women. 
Imps look like elven sorceresses, which is hard to say. Revenants are larger women with rocket launchers on their shoulders. Pain elementals are women in spaceship things that fire little robots, which replace the lost souls. And my personal favourite is probably the Baron of Hell, who is now a woman that kind of reminds me of Lara Croft. Oh, and for Arachnotrons, these are now women in tanks. And that's pretty cool. They all behave and attack just like they do in the regular games, but with cool new skins. The animation on them isn't really anything to shout home about, it's kind of jerky, but they do all have sexy poses, and their death animations and poses are actually quite funny at times, with one of the main attractions I suppose being as they die, their various bits and bobs point into the air in suggestive ways, and depending on how you kill them, and with what weapon, they may even have a wardrobe malfunction. Some of the enemies even experience this when they're in the middle of attacking, so keep an eye out. Other than the sexy reskin though, they are all the same as regular enemies, which I've said a few times now, so let's just take a look at the map pack. Sunlust is a massive 32 level map pack that's one of the hardest ones that I've played, and that's saying something because most of these map packs are hard and meant to be a challenge for players that can breeze through the original games with their eyes closed. All the levels here are packed to the brim with enemies and aren't particularly generous with weapons or ammo, though they do give you enough. However, you do have to pick your battles, as you'll be fighting Mancubus, Barons of Hells and Revenants almost immediately while you've barely got yourself a shotgun. I'll be honest, I did have to resort to cheating on some of the later levels. In fact, I had to resort to cheating on some of the earlier levels just to see the later levels. And in fact, I've only made it to level 6 so far. The levels themselves aren't overly complex, but they do have the usual maze-like structure and key hunting that you'd expect. But it's the abundance of enemies and some tricky platforming sections that really give you the challenge. I kind of like this, as my least favourite part of Doom maps is getting lost and running around in circles hunting for keys or switches to open doors. Though that's not to say it doesn't happen here, because it does. The maps here are all fairly large as well, but they're not too hard to navigate. They don't seem to use any original textures, but they've done a good job of mixing things up, and the levels do change up in design and style every now and then, keeping things fresh. Overall, I would definitely recommend this map pack, and I actually thought that the Zacco mod was a really good fit for this one, and I'd say it's worth combining these two together for a very good time. So there you go, another 10, or technically 11, Doom mods and map packs that I would say are worth a look. I still have a ton more suggestions to go through that have been coming in, so don't worry, there'll be more coming in the future, and make sure you keep letting me know what to include in the future. Check out the description for links to the mods shown in this video, but download them at your own risk. You are welcome. Now all that's left for me to say is thank you for joining us, and we'll see you next time.